At the United States Department of Justice, we are committed to ensuring that our local law enforcement partners have the resources that they need to effectively serve and protect all members of their communities, particularly when citizens exercise their constitutionally protected rights. To that end, the Bureau of Justice Assistance and the Office of Community-Oriented Policing Services are providing new guidance to law enforcement officers about, about how to approach maintaining order during First Amendment protected events. Now, this comprehensive new guide compiles information, tools, and best practices that will help law enforcement officers maintain public safety while safeguarding constitutional rights. Now, as we've seen, durable relationships between the police and their communities do not develop overnight. But as someone who has spent a, a career at all levels of law enforcement and as the brother of a retired police officer, I know the importance of these outreach efforts to ensuring effective neighborhood policing, officer safety, as well as community health. The Justice Department encourages law enforcement officials in every jurisdiction to work with the communities that they serve to minimize needless confrontation. It is vital to engage in planning and preparation, from evaluating protocols and training to choosing the appropriate equipment and uniforms. Now, this is the hard work that is necessary to preserve the peace and to maintain the public trust at all times, particularly in moments of heightened community tension. Now, over the past few months, we've seen demonstrations and protests that have sought to bring attention to real and significant underlying issues involving police practices, implicit bias, and pervasive community distrust. And in most cases, these demonstrations have been both meaningful and responsible and have brought vital issues to the attention of the public at large. Similarly, and I want to emphasize this, the vast majority of law enforcement officers have honorably defended their fellow citizens engaged in these peaceful protests. Now, I know from firsthand experience that demonstrations like these have the, the potential to spark a sustained and positive national dialogue, to provide momentum to a necessary conversation, and to bring about critical reform. But history has also shown us that the most successful and enduring movements for change are those that adhere to non-aggression and non-violence. And so, and so I ask all those who seek to lend their voice to important causes and discussions and who seek to elevate these vital conversations to do so in a way that respects the gravity of their subject matter. Peaceful protest has been a hallmark and a legacy of past movements for change, from patriotic women who demanded access to the franchise, to the civil rights pioneers who marched for equal rights and equal justice. Americans exercising their First Amendment right to free assembly should look, look to those examples as they work to bring about real and lasting change for themselves and for future generations. Now, of course, I recognize that progress will not come easily, and long simmering tensions will will not be cooled overnight. These struggles go to, to the heart of who we are and who we aspire to be, both as a nation and as a people. And it is clear that we have a great deal of important work still to do. But as we move forward, the Department of Justice and I personally will continue to work with law enforcement and communities throughout the country to help build the more perfect union and the more just society that all Americans deserve.